Oh, catch this video while you can. I don't know how long he's going to be staying up, but at the outset, I just want to say that I am not a medical professional, and everything that I read here is just coming straight from all the research that we have found and been given the privilege to reading, okay? These are not my opinions. Please make sure that you go ahead and talk to your doctor or your health professional to see if the vaccine is right for you, and if you are a, ble a breathing individual with red blood in your system, System, then more than likely you are somebody who should be getting the jab according to the CDC and the WHO. Now that that horse shit is out of the way, did you know you're going to be needing boosters into infinity? Yeah, apparently that's uh, that, that that's what Fauci's pushing. Pushing. Why are people still taking this dude seriously? Okay. And uh, why are you also taking the fucking leads from Big Pharma? Who The people who, if you remember two years ago, yeah, that was the big boogeyman of everybody, justifiably so. But now half of the entire population believe that Big Pharma is just another messenger from the prophet on high. It, it, <laughs> they're getting it tattooed on their arm, like they're getting the fucking Pfizer poke, they're getting the Moderna poke they're getting the j and j poke after recovering for a couple of weeks but yeah they're getting it tattooed on their fucking arm like a bunch of sycophants don't believe me i just hop on tiktok if you can survive the cancer now the pfizer ceo apologized for no heads up on vaccine booster announcement fauci says pfizer ceo albert bula apologized on january 8th to national institute of allergy and infectious diseases director anthony fauci for failing to give the biden administration a heads up before news emerged that the company planned to seek authorization for a third dose of its covid 19 vaccine because yeah that dude's fucking extra yacht ain't gonna pay for itself CEO, who's a really good guy, got on the phone with me last night and apologized that he came out with the recommendation. Fauci told CNN on July 9th because he couldn't actually be doing his job, but uh, yeah, he's still on cable news. I think maybe if you just go during the week, maybe this is just the Fauci challenge. Uh, I could be ripping somebody off, but I don't even know if anybody else has put this out there, but it's just so obvious it has to be done. If you guys still have cable news, a uh, high 65 plus crowd and you have msnbc cnn uh, fox news what are the other ones that are out there if you just scroll through any of them i will guarantee fauci is probably on one of those networks at any given time i'm just saying that could be the fauci challenge because really as the director of this fucking na aids i i don't really know what he does other than just speak nazi patients fuck the last time he did that he thought that aids was an airborne disease like this guy's not very good at his job Got the emails to prove it. Pfizer and BioNTech, uh, the makers of one of the three COVID-19 vaccines, approved for use in the United States, released an update on their booster shot research on July 8th, saying that they have encouraging data in the ongoing booster trial of a third dose of the vaccine. The company said they plan to apply to submit their study data to the Food and Drug Administration and other authorities in the coming week. Shortly after the announcement, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and FDA, didn't you guys get around to uh, researching and certifying that instead of just trying to pump out another dose just asking uh, saying that fully vaccinated americans do not need a boosted shot so is big pharma spreading disinformation by saying that uh, they're testing a booster shot but the cdc and the fda are saying that uh, fully vaccinated americans do not need a booster shot uh-oh uh-oh Americans who have been fully vaccinated do not need a booster shot at this time. FDA, CDC, and the NIH are engaged in a science-based, rigorous process to consider whether or when a booster might be necessary, the joint statement said. We are prepared for booster doses if and when the science demonstrates that they are needed or somebody needs a nice cottage to retire to. According to Pfizer and BioNTech, initial data from their booster study suggests that the shot administered six months after the second dose has a consistent tolerability profile and elicits high neutralization against the wild type of the beta variant of the virus. Oh, that the, the beta variant? Oh yeah, that one's long in the rear view mirror. We're on to what, like Epsilon and uh, Lambda and Deep Space Nine? Uh, COVID-19 is a disease caused by the a Chinese virus. You don't say. I forgot all about it. It's been a minute. But who knows what that means for Canadians? I'm pretty sure if it was up to Justin Trudeau, we'd just be in a consistent line going through it over and over and over again to continue to get the poke. Because he doesn't have to believe in the science. He is the science when he's not making really fucking cringy visits to 
indigenous graves with a fucking teddy bear. Oh, he's such a creep. But here, like I said at the beginning of the day, we got a bunch of good news. People who recover from COVID-19 at very low risk of reinfection. Huh, this is brand new, July 10th, today. But I feel like this news story has been around for a long time. But sometimes you just have to state the obvious. People who have contracted COVID-19 and recovered should know that the risk for reinfection is very low, a doctor said after a study he worked on was published. And now that this virus has been around long enough, we are starting to find some studies out there. Researchers analyzed records from Curative, a clinical laboratory based in San Dimas that specializes in COVID-19 testing and has, during the pandemic, been conducting routine workforce screening. None of the 254 employees that have had COVID-19 and recovered became reinfected, while four in the 739 who were fully vaccinated contracted the disease. Those are not insignificant testing pools, but to be totally fair, the people who have received the jab far away the people who have had it and recovered does that also take into account the people who have got the jab who are a part of those 734 we'll see the big takeaway was that if you are not vaccinated and were not previously infected one you have a very high risk of getting infected 24 percent of employees over the last year tested positive however on the flip side if you were vaccinated or previously infected your risk was near zero dr jeffrey klausner clinical professor of preventative me er, medicine and medicine at the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine, lol, uh, told the Epoch Times, Klausner and Dr. Noah Kojima, Lariat, of the University of California, Los Angeles' Department of Medicine joined the curative workers to analyze the records and released a preprint or pre- peer-reviewed version of this study online this week. Researchers found that 4,313 employees who were not previously infected or fully vaccinated, 254 became infected. Again, there's not a lot of commentary that I think I'm allowed to make on here. I can just read this pretty much verbatim. The findings add that the growing number, oh, growing body of research that indicates people who have had COVID-19 and recovered enjoy a similar level of protection as those who have gotten a vaccine following a study from the United Kingdom and one by the Cleveland Clinic researchers. It should give confidence to people who have recovered that they are a, oh, at a very low risk for repeat infection. And some experts, including myself, believe that protection is equal to vaccination, Clauser told the Epoch Times. We are trying to update policies such that people who have recovered have the same privileges and access as people who are vaccinated. You'd love to see it. You'd love to see it because that is something that has been around for a very, very long time that once you recover, you have the antibodies in your system and... Does that double as a vaccination? We didn't have the numbers at the time. Now we have some numbers. Is that going to be the consistent strategy going forward? We don't know for sure. Not yet. 100%. But that's what we've got so far. And also, in some more good news, people who have recovered from COVID-19 unlikely to benefit from the poke. That's where I find myself in this situation. So selfishly, that's why I wanted to elaborate on this topic here because I came across this story right here and as somebody who has had it and had absolutely zero motivation to ever get the poke because based on everything that I know about myself and the way that I keep myself, I'm not in a high risk category. It's just once again, I don't know, maybe this is confirmation bias, but the numbers are starting to come in and maybe it's also, maybe not confirmation bias so much as I've read the studies, we've done the topics, we've covered this stuff extensively at this point and we keep arriving at the exact same spot. So. Let's repeat some more of the obvious. People who have recovered from COVID-19 unlikely to benefit from the poke. People who have previously been infected with the virus are protected against being infected again and thus do not need to be vaccinated according to a new study. Our conclusion is that if you were previously infected, you have been, oh, you are protected because of the previous infection and you do not need the jab. Dr. Nabin Sharitha of the Cleveland Clinic's Department of Infectious Diseases told the Epoch Times. Sharitha, Sharitha, sure. 
and colleagues at the clinic studied data on employees, separating them from four groups previously infected and unvaccinated, previously infected and vaccinated, not previously infected and unvaccinated, and not previously infected and vaccinated. Covers pretty much everybody, right? They found that the vaccines were strongly effective in preventing infection from the China virus, which causes COVID-19. Thank you. But that previous infection also bestows a natural immunity. Among the people who were previously infected, whether they took the vaccine or not, they, oh, there really were no COVID cases, Sharitha said. Of the 52,000, wow, 238 employees studied, 2,579 were previously infected. About half of those remained unvaccinated. Of the 49,659 employees who did not have a previous infection, 41% did not get the jab. Using a Cox proportional hazard regression model and adjusting for the phase of the pandemic, vaccination was linked to significantly lower risk of infection among those not previously infected, but not among those who have had the disease. In conclusion, the authors wrote, individuals who have had the SARS-CoV-2 infection are unlikely to benefit from the COVID-19 vaccine, and vaccines can be safely prioritized to those who have not been infected before. SARS-CoV-2 is another name for the China virus. Exactly. Now, can you continue to transmit it person to person? I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm an asshole with a microphone and a lift license. I can tell you how to get buff, I can tell you how to get big gains, but outside of that, I'm not here to tell you if it's right or wrong for you. I got my opinions, I've shared with you guys what I've thought before, some to my detriment, some on other platforms. My position continues to evolve with the actual studies that are out there, and like I said, I have no intentions of ever getting it, but that could be totally different for you. I just want you guys to have all the available information that's out there, and that's all this video is intended to do. And what I also intend for you guys to do is enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.